Hey YouTube, what's up? Today I'm going to show you how to beat the capstone dungeon so you can get to t world tier 4. I did this at level 60 with a twisting blades rogue. First we'll go through the gear I used and then we'll talk about the skills and show you how it's all done. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe to the channel. That would be a huge help. And if you have any constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments below. First up, we're using the Escape Artist Adventurer Helm. This helm drops a smoke grenade anytime you take damage, which stuns the enemies around you. And you dodge the next two attacks, which keeps you alive. Next up, I put the Protector Aspect on my armor. This bad boy creates a barrier anytime you damage an elite enemy, which comes in very handy again to keep you alive. I used the Wind Striker aspect on my boots, which grants me increased movement speed anytime I critically strike. You can't get plus four core skills on Sacred Gear, so I decided to use these gloves. Enemies are always vulnerable, so basically you have a 30% chance to cast a Shadow Clone to do extra damage. The Disobedience aspect is a pretty much must-have for any build. I like to use it on amulets for the one and a half times effectiveness. It's super easy to stack up, so you constantly have 60% increased defense. So I still haven't found a good umbral ring, so I decided to use this one instead. You're constantly healing thanks to your passives, so this ring gives you a lot of energy back in a quick amount of time. You get this ring from beating the campaign, and you can also find it randomly. Twisting Blades hits a lot of enemies at once, so you're constantly getting energy refunded to you because of it. The Blade Dancer's Aspect is a pretty much must-have for any Twisting Blades build. It makes your Twisting Blades orbit around you and deal a bunch more damage to people who are trying to attack you. In my opinion, it's the best AoE aspect in the game. The Vengeful Aspect is very useful. Since enemies are almost always vulnerable, you have a 9% increased critical chance, which helps with your life sustain and damage. I really like to use Aerostorm in conjunction with Puncture. This aspect makes your basic skill do a lot more damage, and it procs actually quite a bit. Now that we've discussed the gear I'm using, let's talk about the skills. First up, we put one into Puncture, one into Enhanced, and one into Fundamental Puncture. This skill helps you gain energy and makes all your opponents vulnerable. We also put five into Twisting Blades, one into Enhanced, and one into Improved. This offers huge damage and helps daze your enemies. We put one into Stutter Step, which grants 5% movement speed for critical strikes, three into Sturdy, which gets 12% close damage reduction, and three into Siphoning Strikes, which heals 3% of your max life per critical strike. Next up, we put two into Rugged, which gives you 10% damage reduction for damage over time, three into Reactive Defense, which gives you 18% damage reduction for CC, one into Rapid Gambits, which gives your evade a cooldown every time your opponent gets dazed. And of course, three into Weapon Mastery, which increases your sword damage by 9%. This group of skills is kind of our bread and butter for the build. We have one into Dark Shroud, and it's two passives, which gives us a maximum of 40% damage reduction and 20% movement speed. We put one into Poison Trap, and it's two passives. This offers us 25,000 damage over 9 seconds, plus knockdown and 30% chance to reset your imbuement. We put 3 into Exploit, which gives you 18% enhanced damage, and 3 into Malice, which gives you 9% damage versus Vulnerable. We have 1 into Shadow Imbuement, Enhanced, and Blended. This infects everyone around you and gives 15% increased critical strike chance and blows up all your enemies. We have one into Shadow Crash, which gives you a 10% stun chance, and three in Consuming Shadows, which generates 30 energy per kill. We also have three into Precision Imbuement, which gives you 9% increased critical strike. 
For our ultimate skill, we're using Death Trap with Prime and Supreme. This ability is amazing. It gives you 28,000 damage. It pulls enemies and gives you a 10 second cooldown reduction per enemy killed. We're also using three into Adrenaline Rush, which gives you 15% increased energy regeneration, and three into Haste, which gives you either 15% increased movement speed or attack speed. Our key passive is Exposure. It gives you 25% chance to reduce trap cooldown by 20%, and it drops grenades that stun. We finally made it to the big boss. We've already killed Elias probably 30 different times during the campaign, but now it's time to kill him one last time. I swapped out Shadow Imbuement for Poison Imbuement for the extra damage to a solo player. And I swapped also to Combo Points for the extra damage. This whole dungeon was recommended at level 70, but we were able to do it at level 60. The best way to kill this boss is just turn your brain off and spam your abilities directly on him. Try to save your death trap for when mobs come up, but honestly they'll be sucked in, your twisting blades will kill him, and you'll be fine. You should be leeching enough life to stay alive during the fight, and your poison damage does so much the boss will melt pretty freaking quickly. Try this build out for yourself, and if you've had success with it, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, and have a great day.